Hey guys, Dr. Barron here with virtualheadachespecialist.com. I'm working my way through your questions. I'm gonna start with this one here. Uh, overview of CGRP inhibitors, pros, cons, thoughts of lack of long-term safety data. Uh, and so, first of all, CGRP is a very inflammatory protein that is released by the trigeminal nerves during a migraine attack. I'm sure you've heard this buzzword. It stands for calcitonin gene-related peptide. And basically, this is the process of CGRP. So when you get a migraine, think of it like an electrical switch turns on in the brainstem. Uh, that switch may be turned on by stress, hormonal changes, certain foods. Um, you know, there's all kinds of triggers, barometric pressure changes, or it can just turn on. It doesn't have to be a trigger for migraine. So the switch turns on, and that then turns on the trigeminal nerves. Uh, the trigeminal nerves innervate throughout the meninges, around the brain, the arteries of the brain, and when the trigeminal nerves are activated, they release a variety of inflammatory neuropeptides, we call them, and one of the most potent inflammatory neuropeptides is CGRP. So this has been a hot target uh, for migraine treatments over the last few years, and so when the CGRP is released from the trigeminal nerve endings, it diffuses throughout the meninges, around the brain, around the arteries of the brain, and there are three key things that happen in the migraine attack that follows. One is that you get what's called a sterile neurogenic inflammation. So you get inflammation around the brain, the lining of the brain, around the arteries, and when you think of it, a migraine is sometimes almost like a, a sterile meningitis. When you look at it, the patients want to be in a dark, quiet room. Uh, they don't want to move their head around. They don't want to be in a car going over bumps. You know, things like that are going to irritate the head of the neck because it's a very inflammatory event. Second thing that happens is that you get this enhanced pain transmission through the trigeminal nerves into the brainstem, into the cortex of the brain where the pain is recognized. And if you don't stop and abort this pathway, it gets stronger and stronger, and it will lead to status migranosis, which is a severe migraine that's going on, you know, days. So the key is aborting this attack before you get to that stage. Once you get to that stage, a lot of abortives don't work as well. Um, this is where your hair hurts, scalp hurts. It's called allodynia or central sensitization. So the third thing that happens when CGRP release happens around the brain is that you get this blood vessel dilation throughout the meninges and around the brain. Now, the blood vessel dilation doesn't actually cause pain. This was an old theory of migraine that was felt it was because it was this, that you would get the throbbing pain, but actually it turned out that that didn't correlate with the throbbing, uh, the dilation. What happens is that the little trigeminal nerves are innervating and monitoring these trigeminal nerves and around the arteries and, and monitoring the arteries. So when they dilate, the trigeminal nerves monitoring those are activated and they know something's going on here. Those signals go to the brainstem, say, hey, something's happening down here. Brainstem assumes something noxious or insult is happening down there and it says okay, and it releases more CGRP, more inflammatory protein in hopes to fight whatever this insult is, which is actually the migraine process. And if you don't stop this feedback loop back and forth, you end up with a severe migraine attack. So the way that the CGRP um, idea is, is if we can block that event of CGRP being released and from CGRP activating these three steps, we can stop a migraine attack and hopefully prevent a migraine attack. So this is really the basis of the CGRP medications and CGRP inhibitors is a, is a broad overview of what we would call these medicines. So they come in two flavors. The first is the CGRP monoclonal antibodies. And the first of these came out in 2018 with Amovig. Uh, Mgality and Ajovi came out shortly after. Uh, the most recent is Viepti, which is a quarterly 30-minute IV infusion. Um, and these work by binding the receptor, CGRP receptor, or the CGRP protein. So the Amovig is the only one that binds the CGRP receptor, 
where the protein binds to. The other three, Mgality, Ajovine, and Viepti, all bind the CGRP protein itself. And I think that some people do have a better response maybe to uh, receptor binding versus protein binding. And clinically, you sometimes do see that. Uh, I'm sure they'll look at this eventually. But um, you know, if you're not re responding to one mechanism, sometimes it's worth switching to the other mechanism with one of the other options. So the other class of the CGRP inhibitors is the G-Pants. There are four options currently. Um, three of them are abortive. Ubrelvi was the first that came to market. Uh, Nurtec shortly followed that uh, in early 2020, both of them. And um, Zavspret is the newest abortive. This is the nasal spray G-Pant. Uh, and then Qlipta is the only G-Pant which is uh, approved and studied, created purely all for prevention of migraine. Um, now, Nurtec does have some unique feature to it in that it's the only one that is dually approved for either abortive use or preventive use every other day, uh, or both. So that one, you do have a little bit of flexibility to it. But those are the four G-Pants, and those all work by binding the CGRP receptor itself. Um, and so, you know, the pros, first of all, of of all these medicines is that they're very specific for migraine. They target specific migraine pathways, which means you don't have a lot of collateral damage. You're not hitting a bunch of other receptors in the brain that are giving a bunch of other side effects like cognitive side effects and mood changes and things that you see with older historical preventive medicines that we've used over the years. Um, the G-Pants, another pro is that um, they do not cause rebound headache or medication overuse headache. Um, there are no vascular contraindications to these, so you can use these in patients that have had stroke or heart disease or um, you know these concerns that usually tryptans have been contraindications for. You can stack them and use them in combo with tryptans and with other abortives, which is nice. There's no interaction with doing that. Um, I think those are probably the biggest pros of the G-Pants. Um, and you know, it's just, a, it's a nice new option to have. About 30% of people don't respond to tryptans. So having a new option finally as of 2020, when they came out, is always a welcome addition. Um, the monoclonal antibodies. So again, there's three once a month injectables, uh, Amovig, Ajovi, and Amgality. And there's a once quarterly 30 minute IV, which is the Viepti. Uh, you know, another benefit, same thing. You're targeting specific pathways of migraine, so you're not getting a lot of off-target activity, which is usually what gives side effects to medicines. Um, these don't affect liver, kidneys. Uh, you know, they, they're they uh, taken out by the, uh, the lymphatic system, so uh, those are not concerns, and there's really no drug interactions. Uh, so the nice thing about a lot of these new options is that uh, the interaction is, uh, is not a, a concern with most of them with, with a lot of medicines. Uh, and then lastly, the lack of long-term patient data on safety. Uh, you know, all these medicines uh, in the trials, they, they all looked at safety parameters. Uh, they pretty much all had at least a year of open label study with the purpose of just looking for additional safety concerns, red flags, blood work, uh, come, getting abnormal, uh, other side effects. And, you know, in those subsequent studies, there really wasn't any further significant uh, side effects reported. Uh, Amovig was the first that came out in 2018. They had already had five-year data around that time. And, um, you know, there were no real further safety concerns. The only thing that has arisen um, was that there was some uh, post-marketing issues with uh, constipation and, and blood pressure potentially uh, increasing with that one. But otherwise, you know, these medicines, um, the, the, the monoclonals have been around since 2018. So there's been a lot of clinical experience with these. There's really been no further concerns with these medications um, in addition to what was already studied clinically. Uh, the G pants, same thing. They've been around since 2020. Um, you know, they were studied you know, prior to that for several years too, uh, without you know safety concerns with them. So, uh, at this point, we feel pretty confident that you know there's really no uh, long-term concerns with the 